Hey guys, it's me, Gary Lee Stanley, your sales guy. How are you doing today? <laughs> today we're going to dive into our favorite subject, which is sales. All right. We got a cool topic for ourselves today. So let's go ahead and literally dive right on into it. What is our cool topic for today? Our cool topic for today is selling. How to pass your 14 hour, okay, 14 hour continuing education in your real estate and keeping your real estate license. I'm just saying, guys, I've been in sales a long time. And hey, if you want to keep these licenses and certifications, you got to jump through some hoops. And every two years, they expect you to go ahead and learn and re go back over things that you go, dang, I done forgot all about that. So, what did we have to do to past this 14 hour continuing education class. Well, what I did was, was I set myself up with success and I worked with a company and they're called First Coast School of Real Estate and they're at 838 Oh, Bay Meadows Road, Suite 17, Jacksonville, Florida, 32256. And what they did was they set me up with, uh, it's powered by, you know, it's called First Coast Schools of Real Estate, and they powered by uh, ReCampus, okay? And their telephone number is 904-385-9331. You're probably saying, why do you tell me that? Because you're going to have to do your CEs, your continuing education for your real estate license, and you might want to go with somebody that was had a reputable course. And I did mine over, uh, I did it on my phone. I have these meetings that I go to every Sunday. And I'm always early, a couple of hours. So I like to sit and I like to read through the material. And I like to learn about what uh, actually I'm studying. Some people, they like to rush right through. But I don't learn that way. I learn better when I take my time. And see, here's some of the subjects that they talked about. Uh, and just remember, when you first get in your real estate, license, you got to remember, you got to get your 63 hour course. Okay. Some people can do it real quick, but again, I'm one of these kind of people that likes to take my time and learn the material. So that way I can pass the test the first time, or at least by the second time, and also be able to understand what I'm talking about. Sometimes people don't, they get a license like, and you ask them what they learned two weeks later, and they're like, I don't know, but I do. And then after that, within that first two years, you got to take a 45 hour continuing education course. And I did mine through the pandemic. We did it over Zoom. It was really cool, and I'm really grateful I was able to sit and do it. We did it, and we saw the teacher, and we did all the, the training. We did it over so many weeks, and I'm excited about that. But my 14-hour continuing education CE course to keep my license after two years, I had to do this 14-hour course. And some of the subjects that they had were pretty interesting, and some were a little wordy and boring, but you got to jump through the hoops if you want to keep your license. And I do. I like having having my licenses to sell real estate and I sell life insurance and I also help people get education so that way hey man they can improve their life and I don't want to lose a license that I've worked so hard to get because I'm going to tell you what trying to get that real estate license it ain't easy and keeping it just makes sense and this says a 14 hour continuing education course I guess some people can do it within 14 hours but like I said I did mine over a couple of months I did bits and pieces of information at the very end you had an open book test, which I was really like, really? Okay, well, dang, an open book test. And there was like 30 questions that I took on it and I was able to go through it. But see, like I said, some of the information that I read through wasn't on that test, but it was really nice that they did give you the capability to do an open book course. I'm telling you for your CEs. And again, I did that with First Coast School of Real Estate. Now, some of the subjects that they talk about was number one was co the code code of ethics. That means they're going to talk to you about being the truthful person as a, a real estate person. And I'll tell you what, you don't want to get yourself fined or go to jail. You'll find out you screw somebody or you screw up. There are opportunities for you, yeah, to put on those little silver bracelets and I don't want to wear none. So I like to be above board. So I always be honest. And they talked about honesty, which is the best policy. And you know, it's treat others like you want to be treated. You know, you know that old saying? Well, they 
talk about that in there. Also, the Florida uh, real estate uh, uh, law. We had talked about the law, the regulations, how it works, what is expected of you, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. And then personal safety was one of my favorite because there have been some realtors who've been raped and there's been some realtors who've been killed and robbed and stuff. So they do talk about that also. And you've also got to talk about your money laundering situations and stuff like that because there are some people that are unscrupulous. So you got to make sure that you're working with honest people and understanding what mortgage fraud is. Remember I told you there are some people that are out there that are not working for your best benefit. So you don't want to be a part of somebody who's committing fraud. That could be rental fraud. That could mean you don't have your license and you're trying to sell real estate or you are a person who's, you know, maybe help taking money and stuff like that for, for somebody's properties and stuff. You got to be licensed. You got to know what you're doing. If you don't, you can get a nice fine and it ain't that nice. It's, it costs a lot of money. Also, they had information about understanding, uh, understanding of the basics about real estate, how real estate works. I mean, the basics and the fundamentals, you got to know the basics. You got to know some of the, the phrases, the key phrases and information. So that way, when you're talking to other realtors, you don't look like an idiot. Okay. Or maybe you're talking to a customer and you ask them to fill out, a, a, you know, a, the paperwork and documents. If you don't know what you're doing, oh crap. Well, so they go back over the basics and the fundamentals. And I'm telling you about rental properties, what you can and what you cannot do. They also did uh, terminology, like uh, terminology tools, trends and risk. Uh, and, you know, talking about uh, transferring uh, like wire, you know, wire transfers money. When you transfer money over a particular line, you better be real careful that you're not giving somebody else's money away. Okay. And that's why the banks and these people take very, very serious transferring of information and wire transfer of money. So keep that in the back of your mind. You don't want to go and, and lose somebody's money because they, they sent the wrong um, money to the wrong place via wire. Okay. So ask your broker more about that. And you definitely got to be real careful, especially these days with all these smart people out there that are trying to take advantage of nice people. Okay. And then they, like I said, duty theft, marketing, talking about marketing, you know, what you can say, what you can say. And one of the things I, that you need to know, if you work for a broker, I work with United Real Estate Gallery right now. That's the company I work for. So if you put any information out there, you need to make sure that you uh, put their information out there because they, you don't want people to think that it's your company and you're doing it all on your own. Uh -uh. We work for a broker. We work for somebody. Unless you become a broker, then you can do what you, you know, go ahead and put your name out there. But if you work with a company, you definitely want to make sure their name is in the title. I'm just saying, guys, you got to be careful out there. And also, like we learned, we talked about the fair housing rules and regulations. You can't take advantage of people who have kids. You can't take care of people who don't look like you. You can't take advantage of people who maybe have a different orientation, you know, sexual identities. And you got to be real careful. You can't take, take advantage of the elderly. You can't tell somebody, well, you need to go live over there. Uh, you can't do that because there's people that look like you over there. Just against the law, you can't do that. And you can't tell people, hey, man, uh, um, you know, uh, you might not want to buy that in that neighborhood because, you know, there's different people. Or maybe you might want to move over there because they look just like you. You can't do that. You have to be above board and let people live where they want. Now, if there's also this thing, if people have been murdered in the house, been killed, if they died in the house, it ain't our job to be telling people because it, it, you got to be very careful. And if you got weird people living in the neighborhood who may have committed crimes and stuff, you got to be real careful what you say about that. They have rules and regulations because we have, we're not cops. We're not people's preachers and stuff. We're realtors, but we don't want to be dishonest, but we also want to make sure that we don't get ourselves in a bind because they do send people out sometimes who will ask you questions and they can set you up. And believe me, you don't want to go and lose your license because you said, oh, you don't want to live over there because of whatever. It don't matter. You know, we got prejudiced people everywhere on all colors, creeds, and people are prejudiced against each other. Some are lighter and darker than others and all this. So remember, we're realtors. We love everybody. We want to help everybody. 
somebody, buy something, not say, oh, we don't want to help those people because they don't look like me. That's bullshit. Okay, I'm just saying, guys. Also, we looked at uh, rules about contracts. How does a contract work? How do you, I mean, how, you really do got to know, and there's a lot of steps. You see me scratching my head. I'm telling you what, man, and they do change based on your community. And also, when you're like doing, uh, hey, maybe you got a, a, a piece of property and you're, you're wanting to sell something and you give it to somebody else as a referral and you get 30% of it. They get to do most of the work, but you set the referral up. You got to be careful and make sure that stuff is documented. You want to look at how you get paid. You want to make sure that you get paid right. If you're not getting paid right, oh crap. And you got to remember, hey, them brokers are going to get their cut. And if you got somebody servicing your, your paperwork and doing, I got a company I work with called Key and they are awesome. They help me with paperwork and, and doing the stuff that I don't want to have to do anymore. I got somebody else. I pay them a little bit of money and I get to do a little bit less. I still got to work hard. I still got to do what I got to do, but I do a little bit less, but you always got to stay on top of that material and that, that stuff. Because if you don't know about contracts and how they work and paperwork and what you can say and what they're, what's real property, what's not real property, taxes, insurance, you need to know your stuff. I'm just saying guys, and I'm sweating right now because I don't have my air conditioner. I'm sitting in my car. And also we're looking at, let's see what else we had here. Now, one of the, the companies and the people that you work with, you know, you're licensed by the DBPR, the Department of Business. Okay. And these people, they do the regulations on this stuff. And like I said, guys, I, I took my course online and I did it. I paid less than 50 bucks. There are some that may be cheaper, but there are some that are a little bit more expensive and now I'm getting ready to do my continuing education for my life insurance and I got to do a 24 hour course with that but today we're talking about selling how to pass your 14 hour continuing education course and what's it look like and what does it take and what do you have to do you really do need to read your materials guys you got little small courses within small courses and or should I say within each module and the modules like I said they break it down for you if you want to know about condominiums, if you want to know about buying regular real estate, like, you know, land, or if you want to know about property as far as your own property and the information with taxes and the things and the, that you should and shouldn't do, you really do need to read the material. And I highly recommend, like I said, for me, it may not be for you, but I took with, I worked mine with uh, so First Coast School of Real Estate and they were powered by Recampus. And I just thought they were pretty doggone cool. And I thought I'd mention this to you guys. Like I said, you got to remember your first year, you got to go ahead and get your 63 hour course. Within two years after you get your pass your test, you got to get a 45 hour continuing education. And after that, you got to get your 14 hour CEs. And I'm going to tell you what, if you don't follow the rules, the rules will say, well, you can't keep it. And remember guys, you work really hard to get this license, whether you're using it all the time, because I kind of do it part time now more so because I have a another job where I help people with you know getting education and stuff but I also got my my insurance license and those licenses are not easy and they have this thing called continuing education and today we just had a very simple conversation about you know one of my licenses that I want to keep and I hope you'll want to keep it because man they ain't easy to get and not everybody can pass it and not everybody can get it but I did so what do, what what do I want to do I want to keep my license so what do you got to do you got to do your continuing education. And today we did one, talked about the 14 hour continuing education to keep what? Your real estate license. So I hope you got something out of that. Give me a thumbs up and please share my videos and please subscribe. And remember when you're out there selling, always be above board, always be honest and make sure that you do your continuing education before it's time. Okay. I, I don't wait till the last minute. I did that one year and I had to do my real estate license at the same time time and my insurance at the same time and man I almost lost the rest of my hair I was nuts but this time I did it months in advance woohoo 
I'm done. Okay. And now I don't have to worry about it for a little bit more than two years. And now I can go do my insurance when, which is due at the end of the year. Okay. So, hey, man, get out there and sell something. But if you ain't asking for the order, you ain't selling. And today we had a wonderful conversation about how do you pass your continuing education course, your 14 hour course? You do it. Just get and do it. Okay. All right.